Um, but, you know, here we go. Here's this one of the uh, door right here that we painted. Mm -hmm. And we lacquered this door. And this is um, one of the floating panels right here that we caulked. So, um, I guess we'll talk about that and why we do it and when you should do it, when you shouldn't do it. So, we got Zach here and this, he's putting the doors back together. Mm -hmm. And, um, but one of the things about these doors that we're caulking, I think we get a lot of criticism because people tell us we're not supposed to paint or caulk floating panels. In so many words, we get scolded. <laughs> We've been scolded many times for doing so. And, you know, I just want to say first off, We've been doing the process, caulking these floating panels for um, quite a few years, and we've never been called back to one ever that is cracked or um, or separated. So uh, our method has worked, and it's tried and true. But there's some reasons why it possibly works here, and maybe it wouldn't work in other parts of the country or other parts of the world. And I think that might be some of the misunderstanding or some of why people are criticizing us. Yeah, you know, we're, we're in Idaho. We, we live in a pretty dry com uh, climate. The, the humidity stays relatively mild the whole time. We don't get a lot of fluctuations. And, and we also specialize in repaints. And so what we're doing is we're working typically with cabinets that are 20, 30 years old that somebody wants to, to freshen up and, and make look new, change the look of their kitchen, whatever that is, and they don't want to replace all of their cabinets. Well, those doors and, and boxes have been sitting in that kitchen for 20, 30 years. They've pretty well acclimated to where they're sitting and there's not going to be a lot of fluctuation. Um, also, typically, uh, you know, these cabinets that we're working on are not the custom cabinets where you're, you're spending $50,000, $60,000 for a custom set of cabinets. Usually they are uh, kind of more modular cabinets that, that uh, were kind of installed by the builder and were we're working our way through doors that are more than likely already stapled or glued or not actually floating around just because the quality is lower and we can kind of bring that quality up by caulking them and relacquering them. I think one of the, one of the processes when we're caulking them, if you don't put enough caulking on, there is going to be, maybe if the panel was floating, there's the possibility that it could crack. But we do uh, put enough caulking on. So you're trying to get enough caulking that it's going to flow from you know one part of the, the non-floating part, the, the frame of it, to the floating panel itself. And if you get enough caulking on there, if there was any flex, it's going to be able to move and not crack. I mean, this is a lacquer that's going over the top of the caulking. So a lacquer, if there was movement, it would probably crack. But I know, I know in my career, every time I've grabbed one of these um, doors, I don't know if there's maybe just a couple times in my career you can actually find a door that the panel moves and truly does flow. They're typically put together extremely tight, like you say, maybe even stapled together, but most of the time they're not like high-end cabinets where that panel like, kind of floats around. So, um, you know, the, the, the caulking process, that, like I say, that you use just put enough caulk on there, and it's not going to crack. And uh, and I think some of it is comes down to, to aesthetics too. We're trying to achieve a look um, that basically hides the shadowing um, in what we would call the crack itself. So the backs of the panels, we don't caulk them. No, we don't. And why don't we caulk those? Uh, part of it is just the, the time and the efficiency. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, that's not going to be seen. I'm not as worried about those lines as the face because we are doing this primarily for aesthetic. Uh, one of the reasons why also we will, will go towards caulking them is because if we're applying a grain filler onto these cabinets, if we leave this whole or the this uncaulked, you're going to get those gums, for, gummy pieces from the grain filler in those lines, and then it's going to have kind of a chunky looking line where you're going to have some bridging, some not, some bridging, some not, and so caulking is another way to kind of feel, fill that in and seal it up. And we're not typically applying to the back of the door, which is another reason why it's not always necessary for us to do the back. And then you probably can't see it in the video, but the back of the door, it kind of leaves this line. And if the line was consistent all the way around, it might not look you know, that bad, but on the front of the door, you're gonna get some of the paint, um, whether it's a lacquer or a paint, bridging that gap of the line and some not bridging it. And so it's gonna be inconsistent and that look doesn't look as good. I think it looks way, way better when you do caulk them. And so I think it's, you know, a process that we've learned 
over the years, caulking versus not caulking, and the, the cabinets, the, the customers, I think, you know, um, we've learned that it looks better, the customers like to look better mm -hmm. themselves, and I think um, if the customer had a choice, you know, um, whether to caulk them or to not caulk them, I think probably 90% of the time they would choose to caulk them. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and don't hear us saying that this is the only way to do it or that if you want to do a good job that you have to caulk them. What this really comes down to is use your brain. The, understand the climate you're in, understand what you're working with, what the temperature fluctuations are, and then make a decision from there. We're saying we do this, we've never had an issue with it over years and years and years of doing this, and, and it works for us. That doesn't mean that you have to do it this way, it just means it is an option for you Again, depending on what climate you're in. Yep. So we're going to take you over to a job site where we are caulking them. And we're going to show you our caulking method and what it looks like. I caulk a little bit different than John. Mm -hmm. And um, Zach caulks a little bit different than me and John. Everybody has their own method of caulking. But um, I like it kind of to look a little bit fuller. And, and I think I got some scolding and criticism for how I went about caulking it, but that's how I like to caulk them. But we're gonna take you there and we're gonna show you what it looks like right now. Here, and we're painting them all in one day. We use a product right here called Bolt, and this is from White Lightning, and it dries in 30 minutes. Right, John? That's right. It dries really fast. So uh, you can apply it and paint over it within 30 minutes, and we've had Really good luck with it. Have we had a problem with it cracking at all, John? Painting it the same day? No, nope, never had a problem with it cracking. And and the reason why we want to use something that dries so fast is because we are top coating these with lacquer. And so what we don't want is a bunch of moisture stuck underneath that lacquer trying to get out after we've sprayed them. So this is it's Bolt Quick Dry from White Lightning. So let's just start off. I'll show you. This is just you know an inexpensive caulking gun. Nothing fancy. I take in, uh, both John and I, we like to cut uh, just the end of it off, it, kind of like a 45 degree angle. That way you can get it down and um, lay it into the cracks a lot easier. I don't like cutting it off flat. I think John, you, is that the same? Yeah, like I it? like a nice 45 on mine. So, and don't, I don't like cutting it too big because I don't want too much caulking coming out. We're only trying to put just a little small bead of caulking on there. So. I don't, typically when I do caulking on the outside, exteriors and stuff, I like wearing gloves. I don't like it caulking on my hands, but when we're doing caulking like this, really fine, what do we call sponge caulking or rag caulking with a sponge or wet rag. Um, I like to use my bare hands because I can really feel what I'm doing and I can get a really smooth edge. We want all these corners to look really, really smooth and really nice. So I guess in the end, we'll see who's better at doing this with a rag or a sponge. So here we go. I'm just going to start off by putting just a nice little bead um, all around here. John's got, he's got a, a phone. He's going to be doing some video in here on the other end. Um, so just going to start off. I have a wet, I, my sponge isn't wet. So I'm going to wet my sponge. It's got cold water. Um, sometimes I kind of like maybe lukewarm water. Sometimes this, this one's spun. This is, you know, just cool. So I like my hands being wet. When I'm starting to wipe off the caulking, wet hands is gonna give the caulking and you more working time. So I'm just gonna apply your nice, small bead of caulking on here. If, we must have a bubble in it. This stuff's really hard to get out. It is, and this stuff is really hard and my hand is wet. So here we go. Another thing that the caulking, this caulking is really cold. It's been out in our storage facility. So it's, and it is below freezing outside. So um, the caulking is really cold and really hard. And the caulking didn't freeze. We do keep it above freezing, but the temperature still is pretty low on it. The temperature is pretty low out there. Like I said, it's below freezing, but the storage facility has a heater in it, but it keeps it um, cool. So now I got a nice bead of caulking on there. So I'm gonna start wiping it off. And I like wiping a lot of it off. I'm just gonna be leaving just a little bit behind. When I get down to these corners, I like to start wiping it out of the corners. And I'm just gonna keep working it 
Uh, and then I'm going to use my tile sponge to begin smoothing it out even more and get these down in these corners. And this is where you don't want very much water in this tile sponge at all. Otherwise, it's going to, when you start raking it out of the corners, it's going to start leaving a lot of water behind. And I'm just going to keep working it until I get you know, the right amount out that I want. And I'm just going to keep smoothing these corners until I get the corners looking exactly how I want. It's just, you got plenty of time. The water's giving you working time. And now it's getting about the way I like it right here. You just keep working it in, and there, there you have it right here. A little bit wet, but I like my corners. I like a little bit of caulking in the corner so it kind of smooths and rounds them out. And there you have it. That's a door done, you know, my method. Now we'll look and see uh, Walkie John do his. So again, similar, not a lot of water in the rag, just enough to get it a little bit damp. And unlike Chris's method, I'll end up using my finger to push all of this in. And I'm using the rag mostly to, I'm gonna use the rag mostly to keep my finger clean and basically give me a good clean surface with my finger to use to clear out the caulking. So I will run my finger and then I'm just going to wipe my finger off so it's completely clean and I'm not leaving any excess caulking or ridges or chunks. like that. And so then you can take your rag, if you've got a little excess that you want to wipe off with the rag, you can wipe it off. Otherwise, it should be good to go. So there you have the two methods of how to caulk these door, the floating panels to make them just look a lot nicer when the cabinets are done. If you don't caulk these, you're going to have kind of like this little um, little gap in there that's a shadow and I would say we've had customers in the past that didn't like that look and so now we just um, it's kind of standard that we caulk them it just gives it a more finished look um, and I know there's gonna be people out there who think that we are committing some sort of crime by caulking floating panels together and, and like you said we found one it eliminates the shadow and two the majority of the time these panels have cured enough and they're in a consistent temperature enough that they're not actually moving around all that much and we've never had an issue with them cracking apart yep no crimes committed here none we're back here we are back in the kitchen again so there you have it that's what our process looks like when in the caulking process how i caulk a little bit how john caulks a little bit and i think we showed you how zach caulks about a little bit if i didn't i'm sorry <laughs> anyways uh, let's close this thing up um we'll talk about um, some of the some of the questions and comments we did get uh, previously in one of our maybe live videos we did where we showed this and and people really scolded us and stuff and there was some things i mean we should be caulking before we prime did we sand before we caulked and i i guess that is a good point i mean is the caulking going to stick if we prime this first and then caulk it, is the caulking gonna stick? What caulking do we use? And, um, cause we do caulk it the same day that we lacquer it and we use a caulking that dries in 30 minutes and it can be painted within 30 minutes. So, um, should we prime it first? I, I gotta say one of the things, the, the cabinets, I think maybe some of the people uh, saw the video and it maybe it appeared like the cabinets were raw wood. They weren't raw wood. What kind of coating did they have on them? Those had a lacquer previously on them. And it's something to also consider. Like we said, we're typically doing cabinet repaints and so we're doing things, uh, cabinets that have been there for a while. So even if you wanna get out and say like, well, it can't bond to a lacquer surface or it can't bond to a poly surface, 
I, the, the thing is, is these coatings are worn out. They're not brand new coatings that we're applying this caulking to. So there is enough of a breakdown of the, the previous coating that that caulking has no issues bonding, at least in our experience, no issues bonding to that, that previous coating. And we do use a higher end caulking too. We are not using a low grade caulking. We're typically using, you know, adhesive style caulkings, um, a, a caulkings that are siliconized caulking. But the one specifically we use now, it, I believe it's called Bolt. Is yeah. it um, Bolt? It's White Lightning's Bolt Quick Dry Caulking. And so it is paintable. I believe it's in 20 minutes even. And so through the magic of our support crew here, you can see one of these wonderful cartridges of caulking. Flying through the air. Um, pretty good catch. So with something like this, we're able to caulk those panels. We give it about 30 minutes and we sh we're, we're good to coat at that point. Now I know some of the feedback we've gotten too as well. There is less flexibility in a quick dry caulking and that's how it, it helps it dry out faster. Um, that may be true again, but we're in a climate where there isn't really any movement anyways. Uh, the cabinets have all acclimated to where they are and so it isn't an issue for us. Again, use your brain for your climate and where you're at and make that decision. I think if they were bare wood, it would be uh, a proper to prime them first yeah. and then go through the caulking process. But you know, we've tested this process. I gotta go back to this in our process that we go through. This has been tried, tested in a method that works for us. We've never got a call back ever on this. And, and I, I wanna emphasize that because if these cabinets were, call, or were cracking and we were getting callbacks, we would be changing our methods. And another thing I don't think we discussed, prior to the caulking, we do clean the cabinets. We wash them with Dawn. So, um, and what's that process look like, John? You know, we, we just use Dawn. You could use something like denatured alcohol. You could use something like a deglosser, um, which would also kind of help soften up that previous coating, depending on what it is. Um, and really, we just, we scrub them down with the Dawn. We find it dries out pretty fast. We separate the door so they have a little bit of air going between them. Um, you know, if you really were worried about the caulking bonding, it really isn't that hard to take a spray can of bonding primer and spray those edges, give it about 20 minutes to set up, and then caulk. You're just adding extra steps that, like we said, may not be necessary for achieving the look that you want. We are in the business of making customers happy, and um, consistently we get the majority of our business is based on referrals and if we were doing doing this to cabinets we'd paint a lot of cabinets if the process wasn't working we wouldn't be getting referrals and our business wouldn't be doing well we're highly referred in the treasure valley and we're highly referred because of a reason because we did do good quality work and that's what we want to continue doing in the future if you guys have any tips and tricks when it comes to this method something different than what we do don't we want to hear about it john yeah let us know in the comments below let us know where you're from and what experiences you've had because like we said maybe if you live in florida texas somewhere like that where it's really humid and there is a lot more fluctuation in that that humidity maybe it doesn't work and you've experienced that so if that's your experience, let us know so that other people can see, we can see, and that's how this whole community kind of learns these things and figures things out. And it, that's a wonderful part of the internet. Yeah, it's really cool. And we're also on Instagram and Facebook, so you can take pictures of what you've done, share it with us there. Uh, Instagram is Idaho Painter, Facebook is The Idaho Painter. We would love to see what you're doing. We'd love to hear your tips and tricks there too. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are interested in buying our really cool shirts, where can you find them? You can find them on our website, theidahopainter.com. We've got the shirts, we've got the hats, we've got nifty little tools like this two-edge knife that we found. And look, it's a five in one and a knife together. How did someone not invent that 20 years ago? Super cool. You can go find some of the really cool tools that we really, really like and we really use on our website, theidahopainter.com. Go follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We would love to see you there. And as we always say, we'll see you on our next video. Out.